Hello and welcome to iCatholic. I'm Wendy Grace. Well, we thought as we had Pastor Nick Park in studio and Bishop Kevin Doran on the line recording a separate piece for the Pro-Life Campaign's annual conference that we would have them for iCatholic as well to talk about an issue that is important, I know, to so many of you. The fact that at the moment here in Ireland, we remain the only country in Europe that is unable to have our churches open for public worship. We are sadly joining countries like North Korea and Saudi Arabia in our ban on public worship. So what can we actually do about it? Well, Pastor Nick, what would you say to people who are very frustrated with this? What can we do? I would say that we, I, that I sense the frustration there. I feel the frustration there. I mean, it, it, is, it is really annoying because as churches, I do feel that uh, after the last lockdown, we did everything that was asked of us. Churches have been exemplary in the procedures they follow to try to protect people. And there is a sense that we are being punished for the actions of others. But I, I would say to Christian believers of all traditions, don't allow your frustration to flow, overflow into anger. You know, but uh, we, we, we have a right to be frustrated, uh, but we need to be innovative at these times. And we need to still maintain a Christ-like attitude even at a very frustrating time. That's a very important point. Bishop Doran, as Nick was saying, you know, just the work that went into, and I certainly saw it in my own church, just amazing to see lay people volunteering their time, the cleaning that was being done, stewarding all that effort that was put in only to have church doors closed once again. Yeah. What can we do now to, to put the pressure on the government to say, it's not fair that shops can be open, but our churches can't? I think, that, I mean, the Holy Spirit certainly was was raising up new gifts in the church all the time uh, during this. Uh, and I think we certainly have to maintain our firm commitment to support the public health uh, effort, because that is a, a pro-life thing to do. But I think what we need to do also is to try to make sure that people have a better understanding of the actual role of the church in society in providing and nourishment for people. We, we've no problem with people going to supermarkets because they need to be fed. But what a lot of people are saying to me is we need to be fed spiritually as well. And maybe the mistake that we made in some ways, it was a happy, a happy fault of you. Like we, we did the online thing very well. And so now government are coming back and saying, sure, haven't you got mass online? Isn't that fine? And it's not fine. It's second best. Do you think that people maybe underestimate the importance of them as individuals, not kind of letting it fall back on hierarchical structures to put the pressure on? And that's important too, um, but that they need to be the ones to pick up the phone to their public representatives or write that letter or send that email. Yes, I think. Yeah, I, 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 I'd be saying that to people, you know, when they contact me and say, uh, you know, what, what are you doing about it? And I'd say, well, <laughs> have you done anything about it yourself? I have been on to all the TDs in the two constituencies where my own diocese is. And I have to say, I have found them very supportive. Um, but I don't think uh, I don't think people really can see beyond this idea that that the church is some way kind of involved in, in, in dealing with death. You know, we, 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 we rush to people in emergencies, but we're actually involved in the pastoral care of people all the time. And, and if you're, you know, if you're kind of, uh, you know, selling uh, bicycles at the moment, you, you can go to work and that's, you know, there's no restriction on that. But if you're, if you're um, trying to pastorally care for people in an extended rural community, uh, you can't do that except for very restricted, limited uh, ways. Uh, yes, I, I agree totally. I mean, I would say that we are very grateful for the Catholic archbishops that have been seeking to meet with the Taoiseach and argue the case for churches being allowed to worship in ways obviously that are safe. Um, so, so we are grateful for that, but it, it needs more than bishops and archbishops. Ordinary people do need to be expressing how important church is to them as well. And how it's an essential service to them. Yeah, yes, indeed. And, and I suppose that pastoral care piece that Bishop Doran was talking about, and I know in your own community, Nick, you've been doing so much to try and reach out to people, but you almost feel hampered in many ways. Yes, yeah, it, it's, it is very difficult. It's compounded, I think, by the fact that the people who most need the pastoral care are often the ones who are most vulnerable. So obviously, you know, this is not something where you rush in gung-ho. You've got to be 
uh, very, very careful about public health requirements. But I think it is possible to do that, and that sh should not be hindered. Well, Pastor Nick Park and Bishop Kevin Doran, thanks so much for that discussion today. Thank you.